Hey folks, a couple episodes back, I talked about pipes, and that episode was one of my most popular episodes yet. Thank you for watching it. A lot of great feedback came in, as well as a few questions that I want to take on in today's episode. Three general types of questions came in. The first asked about the shortcuts through the keyboard of inserting a pipe character. So you don't have to write percent greater than percent, <laughs> um, or the vertical line, and then the greater than sign. Is there a shortcut to do that? Yes, there is, and I'll show you how. The second asked, Pat, <laughs> aren't you aware that there's a new version of R out that allows you to use a placeholder for the base R pipe? I wasn't aware of that. I will show you how you can do that now. The third comment that I received was that there are people that do need to worry about performance and are wondering about the difference in performance between using the base R pipe and the Mag Ritter pipe. So we're gonna look at all three of those over in our studio, you will see right off the bat that yes, I am using our version 4.2.1. Uh, the added functionality to the pipe came with our version 4.2. Um, I would suggest that we keep looking in the release notes for anything having to do with pipes because this definitely seems like an active area of development for base R. Now, in my uh, source code, I'm using pipe demo.r, which I developed in that previous episode. If you want to get a hold of this script, down below in the description, there's a link to a blog post that will get you everything you need to follow along. Again, it's not really important what the actual code is um, or what the data are, um, just kind of that you see my logic as I'm working through everything here. So I'm going to go ahead and load my data. Uh, this code, localweather.r, gets me a data set of local weather from a NOAA weather station over in Ann Arbor, just a few miles from here. It also loads Mag Ritter. Um, I don't really need that for this episode because the typical pipe that, that we're all used to, the percent greater than percent, comes to us with the tidyverse, which is loaded in code localweather.r. So the first thing I wanna show you is how you can do the keystrokes to generate the pipe. So the shortcut to insert the Mag Ritter type pipe would be Control Shift M. Uh, that should also work on a PC. Alternatively, on a Mac, you can also do Shift Command M, uh, and that will also get you the pipe. If you're not sure, if you're having problems understanding what those keystrokes are, you can always go up to Tools, and then Keyboard Shortcuts Help. That brings you this monster page of all of the different shortcuts that you can use to get different things to happen. But what we're interested in is in this column source editor. And then if you come down here, you will see insert pipe operator. And so again, that's control shift M to insert the pipe. Of course, this is the Mag Ritter type pipe. What if you want the base R type pipe? Well, for that, you can go up to RStudio preferences. Um, again, that's where it is on a Mac, but you can also go over to tools global options to get the same dialog window. Uh, this will also work on a PC. If you then go to code, you'll see that there is now a uh, radio button here for use native pipe operator. And again, this requires R 4.1 or greater, which we have. So I go ahead and click check on that and then scroll down and I'll hit OK. And so now if I do Control Shift M, I get that pipe character, right? And if I do Command Shift M, I also get that pipe. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and leave it with the default of the Mag Ritter type pipe. So again, I'll go back to Tools, Global Options, Code, and then I'm going to deselect Use Native Pipe Operator, and I'll go ahead and click OK. And then just to double check, I now have it. Those of you that have watched many of these videos know that I am uh, kind of just used to typing out the three characters, right? Uh, so maybe something I will work on is just developing the muscle memory to use those shortcuts of uh, typing out the pipe character. Issue two then is the placeholder. And so if we look down at our code, you'll recall that we talked about creating this data frame, no NA, no zero, where we removed all the NA values from our local weather data frame. Local weather, as you may recall, has four columns, the date, Tmax, PRCP, and snow. And so no NA, no zero, removes any of the rows where PRCP or snow are NA values and keeps any values, any rows where snow is greater than zero, right? And so we load that. We could then feed that no NA, no zero into core.test and we could calculate the correlation between the amount of precipitation and the amount of snow for a given day. And we find that the correlation is 0.64. 
I then developed a way without using a pipe that basically uses tools from dplyr, like drop na and filter, to go ahead and run that and get the same basic result, right? So we again see that we get the correlation previously of 0.64. Here we get 0.64 as well. We then came to using the base R pipe, where we again used local weather, we then used drop na, and then filter. And so these are dplyr verbs, dplyr functions, that are stitched together with the new base R pipe. And so again, when we load that, I then had to kind of drop outside of the pipeline because I wasn't aware uh, that there was a placeholder, right? So if I come down here to kind of the more pure dplyr approach with magrid or pipes, you can see that I can use that period as a placeholder. And so what that period says is take all the output of these three steps and plop it right here, right? And so what we did here is we broke the pipe, we assigned the value to no NAs, no zero, and then plop that in there. Well, I'm here to tell you, <laughs> along with people in my comments, that there is a placeholder, and that is an underscore. And so again, I can go ahead and add to the pipe, and then instead of putting data equals no NAs, no zeros, I can put an underscore like that. And so now when I run that, I guess I can go ahead and remove this no NAs, no zeros. I now get 0.64 as my correlation value, which is basically um, what I had before, but it's subtly different, right? So here it's 0.640411, here it's 0 0.604, So that little difference is going to matter uh, for something I'm gonna do here soon. And the difference is up here I dropped NAs for PRCP and Snow, whereas here it also will drop NAs for Tmax. So let's go ahead and put in PRCP and Snow. And so now we get the same correlation value that we had up above, ever so precise. And we'll want to do the same thing down here by taking PRCP and Snow and putting that into the values for drop NA. Again, we get the same value. So again, what I wanted to show you in this part of the episode is that similar to how we can use a period with the MagRitter pipe to indicate where the data should go if it's not in the first slot, we can use an underscore now with version 4.2 and after of R when using the base R pipe. So something I didn't really mention in the last episode is that a lot of the stuff that comes to us from dplyr and the tidyverse is a little bit slower than what we find with base R. And so the premium of why do we use dplyr is because uh, the things work <laughs> uh, more intuitively, right? It, it's easier to read what's going on. The verbs make a lot more sense than perhaps some of the other verbs that come to us from base R, right? I don't have to worry about brackets and dollar signs and commas and all sorts of things. I can use verbs like filter, right? Or drop NA. And so what I'd like to do is go ahead and do some benchmarking of these different approaches. And so to do that, we're gonna use a special function uh, from a package called bench. And so we'll do install.packages on bench. And so that installs this into my rnv. I'll go ahead and do rnv colon colon snapshot. Great, so now bench is installed in part of my r environment, which is great. And so now what I need to do is I can basically create a benchmark test comparing these three different approaches. I have uh, pure base R, I have dplyr with the base R pipe, and I have dplyr with the magritter pipe. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the mark function from the bench package, see what they did there, <laughs> um, to benchmark these three different approaches to calculating the correlation, okay? And so I'm gonna start with these two here, and so we'll do bench colon colon mark, and then we will then use the open parentheses and the closed parentheses here. And we will separate these two pipelines with a comma. And I will call this first one, uh, this will be dplyr base, because I'm using dplyr verbs like drop na and filter with the base pipe. And here I will do dplyr magritter equaling that. And so if I run these two uh, approaches, I then get this output from uh, the benchmark function. And so what you'll see is that there's two ways of doing it. And uh, the benchmark function basically takes my function and it runs it a bunch of times. 
and it then make sure that the two functions give us the same output, which is why it was important to make sure that the correlation output that we got from these different pipelines was the same, and so it is. And so what we see then is that dplyr with magritter um, is actually faster than dplyr with base, right? For whatever reason, uh, for this uh, conditions, right, we're able to do 224 iterations per second using dplyr with the magritter pipe versus 114 iterations per second with dplyr using the base R pipe, okay? So let's now compare it to using pure base R. So we had something like that back up here. Um, and so I'm gonna go ahead and grab this code and I will call this base base. And we're gonna need to massage this a little bit. So this was the operation that got assigned to no NA, no zero. So I'll go ahead and take that and plop that in there in place of no NA, no zero. And now I've got my base base, and I need to put a comma at the end of this, run that benchmark again. And so now we see base base is a lot faster than dplyr magritter even, right? So it'll do 655 iterations of this correlation analysis in the time um, that it perhaps takes 254 iterations using dplyr and magritter, right? So we see that pure base is faster than dplyr with magritter. Of course, one of the advantages of having the pipe is that it's a lot more readable than all this gobbledygook, right? So we have dplyr with the base R pipe. What happens if we'd use base R with the base R pipe, right? So we can do that where let's go ahead and grab this code and we will call this base base. And we're gonna take local weather and we're gonna pipe this into a subset command. And so we'll do a subset. Subset is a lot like filter. I'll go ahead and put that here. And so we'll then say not is.na on PRCP and uh, not is.na on snow. And so I'm gonna run this to make sure I get that same correlation value we had before. So this base base is the same name as this I recall. Uh, so I'm gonna call this base uh, no pipe. And then we have base base. So base R with the base R pipe, dplyr verbs functions, with the base R pipe and then dplyr with the magritter pipe. Again, I can run this benchmark. And what I find is that again, if we look at the median time that the base with no pipe uh, takes uh, 1.4 millisec 1.46 milliseconds, uh, base base, so base with the base pipe takes basically twice as long, so about three milliseconds. Uh, the dplyr verbs with base is actually the, the slowest of the bunch and then dplyr with magritter is just under four seconds, right? So let's try a fifth approach, which would be base R with the magritter pipe, okay? Um, hopefully you don't feel like I'm beating this over the head too hard. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this base base and let's do base magritter. And we can again replace these uh, base R pipes with the magritter pipe. Go ahead and do that. And then this needs to be a period. So this result really surprises me. I'm glad I did this comparison. What I find is that the base R functions with the magritter pipe is actually faster than the dplyr with the magritter pipe. And it's basically the same speed as base with no pipe, right? Um, it's even faster than base with the base pipe, right? So that's a little surprising to me. And I'm sur sure people out there will have thoughts on that. Um, in the long run, I'm not sure that these differences in execution speeds really matter a whole lot, um, but it's surprising that the performance hit, the bigger performance hit, seems to be when you start using those dplyr functions, okay? So one thing we could do is we could go ahead and save all this um, benchmarking to what I'll call bench uh, mark uh, pipe, and then I can do auto plot with uh, benchmark uh, pipe, and we'll do type equals jitter. Autoplot is a built-in function with the bench package, and it will automatically generate a plot of the benchmarking data. And so these values that are keyed by color is the amount of garbage collection, basically how it's cleaning up after each iteration. Uh, we really just need to focus on the none, right? And so those are the fastest speeds. And again, we saw what we saw um, 
in that table view, right? Where base R with the base pipe um, is a little bit slower than base with no pipe and slower than base with magritter, uh, followed by dplyr with magritter, followed with dplyr with the base R pipe. So the final thing I wanna do is I wanna go ahead and let's take the fastest one we had, which again was base with magritter. And I'm gonna copy this down and I'm gonna put a S at the end of this for streamline because I have two subsets here, right? And so I have one, two, three pipe characters, but I probably only need two, right? So let's go ahead and bring this snow greater than zero up here into this other subset. And I can remove this line 39, run all that. And then I can look at benchmark pipe. And again, this is the streamlined version. And we can see that by removing one of those pipes, it actually speeds up by about 30% or so, right? So if you remove the pipes and you remove those dplyr functions, things get a lot faster. So looking back at this result again for the base with no pipe makes me worry that I'm perhaps not doing a true apples to apples comparison, right? And so up here, I have all this stuff going on um, where I'm using uh, the selections where I'm basically building different vectors. I'm pulling out three vectors and then combining them to each other, right? And so I wonder if the subset function isn't perhaps a little bit more efficient than what I'm doing uh, in my other code. So let me refactor this. So I'll go ahead and copy this base uh, no pipe. I'll go, in, go ahead and put an underscore S at the end of that. And we'll do subset local weather. So not NA on PRCP and not NA on snow. And we want snow uh, to be greater than zero, right? So again, let's run this and I'm missing something or I've got something extra. I've got this extra square brace here. All right, so we'll go ahead and rerun that. Oh, and I have an extra parentheses here <laughs> and I don't need that comma there. All right, so let's try this again. Oh, and I need a closing parentheses here. And again, that gives me the result I'd expect. So again, I now have, I think, a bit more of an apples to apples comparison. Instead of doing subsetting um, directly into the rows and columns of local weather, I'm using the subset function. So I wonder if the subset function isn't actually faster than what I was doing, basically by creating a bunch of logical vectors to then index the rows I want out of local weather. So let's run this and we'll find out. So we have this surprising result then that the base R code with no pipes that we've used the subset on still runs slower than base with no pipe, right? So where we basically did it as a single one-liner um, with the indexing with those dollar signs actually ran a bit faster than using the subset function. Um, I'm intrigued by this result where MagRitter um, is running faster <laughs> using base R code. Um, I don't know that these differences really matter a whole lot. This x-axis is on a log scale. Um, and so these differences aren't huge. Um, and I suspect if we created a different set of computations that we wanted to test, that we would get perhaps a different result, okay? So I think in general, the results are um, dplyr functions are slow and pipes tend to add uh, complexity, they tend to slow things down a bit. Where does that all leave us? Well, I think the reason that we use pipes isn't so much for efficiency in running the code, but it's for efficiency in reading the code, right? And so while I might have something like this, that to me is very readable, right? As long as there's not a pop-up in the middle. <laughs> this is a lot more readable than perhaps something like I have up here, right? That's just, I get a little bit lost. And this is frankly a relatively simple <laughs> a line of code. And again, these pipelines, whether we're using dplyr or base R, or we're using the, uh, the base R pipe or the magritter pipe, right? It's just a lot more readable and understandable what's going on. Also, I find that the dplyr functions um, are more intuitive to use, they're more intuitive to read. And so, yeah, perhaps they don't perform as well, but I don't need all that performance, right? We're talking milliseconds here on this type of calculation. Um, I don't need that level of performance 
when I can very easily do something like drop NA here on a single column. There is an na.omit, um, but that's the same as running drop na without any arguments. So basically it would remove all of um, any row that had an na value in any of the columns, right? Whereas drop na gives me some more precision. And um, this drop na kind of harkens back to functions that people are used to using with like databases, like MySQL and things like that. So again, I think the advantage of using dplyr functions isn't their performance, obviously, because we see that they're slow, um, but in their readability and how they work well together. And to me, I think that's a benefit. There's people out there that you will find that are dplyr tidyverse haters. I think they're in the minority, but realize that there is this trade-off perhaps between performance and readability, expressiveness, uh, and the ability for these tools to fit together. Again, if you are interested in optimizing your speed, then use tools like we did here with a bench package that has that mark function um, and try different experiments. I think that's one of the cool things about our programming is that we have these tools that enable us to do these experiments. I suspect most of you probably don't care and that the difference that you're gonna find in performance is super minuscule. I don't think I'm gonna revisit this in another episode, but if you have experiments, report your results down below in the comments. I would love to hear what you come up with um, and let me know. All right, spread the word about the, all the cool things we can do with pipes and I'll see you next time for another episode of Code Club.